Hello and welcome to Subscription Drop 4 of Thinking Particles. In this feature video, we will talk about the enhancement we have done to the implicit surface operator in Thinking Particles. You can now procedurally control the color of the surface, UV coordinates of the surface, or any other aspect of a material created by the implicit surface operator node. In this animation, we procedurally control the reflectivity, glossiness, and the color of the material. As the chocolate hardens, we remove the reflectivity and glossiness of the material. This is a fully procedural approach and totally controlled by the particle effects. When we remove the hardening status, we turn back to the original materials. Keep in mind, this is a per particle procedural effect. You may control any aspect of a material if you wish. Transparency, reflection, self-illumination, any aspect can be procedurally controlled. Now let's have a look how we created the scene. Let me explain a little bit how we can set up and control colors and materials with thinking particles. Here you can see a real-time playback of the scene we just saw. And this is the viewport playback, including simulation and visualization of the surface, all done in real-time in the 3D Studio Max viewport while recording this video. Let's wait a little bit until we reach the frozen state and then we stop the animation and we'll have a look at the setup. For beginners, this might be a little bit overwhelming when you see the setup, but just take some time and listen. It's easy and it's fully logic and fully procedural. You will understand how powerful Thinking Particle Subscription Drop 4 is. The first thing we want to explore is how we create the particles. We have these two particle sets. We have this chocolate and this milk. We start everything with the time interval where we say how long do we want to emit a fluid and we do that with our time interval and then we emit the particles with our matter waves. Subscription Drop 4 offers new functions and features. One new feature in matter waves is the flow option. When you check the flow option, matter waves generates particles in a continuous flow with a continuous rate. That's very good for creating fluid flows. The two time intervals we have here each control the generation of the chocolate particles and the generation of the milk particles. We have data channels we assign there and in these data channels we assign the color. To store the color per particle we created these data channels for the particle group. So each particle can store its own color. So we assign the chocolate color when we create chocolate particles and we assign the milk color when we create milk particles. So in the creation process, we have now everything to go and start our simulation. We assign the color for the chocolate and store that in the data channel and the same for the milk. We store that in the relevant data channel. So this is pretty uh, the setup for creating the uh, fluid simulation and we will head for our next dynamic set where we control the hardening effect or the cool down effect of our chocolate. So we assume when the chocolate cools down it's no longer shiny and, and has no reflectivity so we want to control that. We are doing the freezing effect and hardening effect with our freeze operator and we use a threshold where we just say based on age it cools down and we want to cool down the particles and we do that with this egg timer and we do it in 30 frames. So whenever the cool down is activated it takes 30 frames to cool down. And then we use the value to value and we make sure that's a very important point down here. We make sure our output is always between zero and one. And we use these two numbers to drive our hardening. That would be the reflectivity and our glossiness as well. So we store these two values along with each particle 
for our reflectivity value and the glossiness value. The color that will uh, change is stored in the particle data set in the other node. Let me bring up the material. So how do we access these data channels? We access these data channels through the vertex channel data. So we use the vertex color channels and the implicit shape operator supports that. It now stores in the vertex color channels per vertex. It stores the color information or any information we want to set. It doesn't have to be a color. It can also be a just a number, like in this case, where we want to control the glossiness between 0 and 1. So it's a pretty straightforward and simple setup, and you can access and control your material in a fully procedural way. Right now, all the data is taken off the mesh, off the implicit surface mesh. It stores and interpolates all the color and data information in there. So that is all the magic we need to have a fully procedural material setup. The last part is having a look at how we can control and transfer the data. And in implicit shape node, subscription drop four comes with a new rollout menu. This new menu, data to mapping channel, allows you to procedurally control every aspect of your surface and material setting. You can decide which data channel is mapped to a material channel. And keep in mind, material mapping can also work with components. So an RGB allows you to transmit to the material editor three individual values, R, G and B. And also keep in mind, RGB are just numbers. So it's like a vector. You have three individual numbers. However, this can also be a color. So you are very flexible and you have all options you ever dream of. Thank you for watching this video and check out our other Subscription Drop 4 videos.